In this video, I want to look at a few of the other panes that are part of the layout package. Last time, we set up our border pane and we just added some little things into it. And we can remind ourselves of what that looks like. So we had just a label on top, that's here. We had a button on the bottom. Uh, a list view on the left, which actually takes up a lot of area, <clears throat> another single button on the right, and then a text area in the center. Now, what I want to do is I want to put some other rather simple uh, panes inside of top, bottom, and right. Now, if I were making a real GUI here, turns out that using the border pane and putting a menu bar at the top is a great way to get a menu bar into your application. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to add a menu bar. I'm going to add an HBox. Okay, so I'm going to change the thing that we're creating here for the top to be an HBox. I'll go ahead and uh, create it separately. <clears throat> and the question then is what do we pass to the HBox? Well, we can go look in the API for this. So we have our layouts. We'll just pull up HBox this way. So you can pass a HBox <clears throat> the children. You can also pass it a spacing, which is how much it will space out the elements. So in this case, I actually want to populate my HBox. Perhaps we'll use that same label that we had before and then a maybe a button. I'm just trying to put things that are rather simple uh, that won't be you know, challenging to understand or confusing. And then a text field. I'm not trying to create a pretty GUI. Uh, that's the, the primary thing I want to make sure that people understand. <laughs> I'm just demonstrating how these work. And, whoops, this should be val hbox equals that new hbox. And then I can put hbox here. And let's go ahead, run that, see if I have that right. And then we'll add, apparently not, uh, oh, the only thing I imported was border paint. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and change this to an underscore so that we can use all the layouts that are in there when we get to the layouts that are um, -bum. new text field. Oh, that's right. The text fields do not take their starting text. We would have to set that separately, but I don't feel like putting them all on separate lines. Okay, so I have the label, the button, and a text field there. They're all right on top of each other though, and that is why you have the option to pass in a spacing before you pass in all the children. So let's go ahead and do that and make these, say, 10 pixels apart. And we can see what that looks like. Okay, that looks quite a bit nicer. Um, okay, so that's what I wanted to put on top was the HBox. There's a companion to the HBox called a VBox, and the VBox, obviously, since the HBox lays things out horizontally, the VBox lays them out uh, vertically. Let's go ahead and we're going to copy those two lines. I'm trying to decide how I would want to lay this out in the code. Actually, I only want this line. Okay. V and V. This is a fairly simple demonstration. I have to say that putting a text field like this on the uh, on the side, as I'm going to do with my V box. So I want to set my V box over here on the right it's not going to produce the type of layout that I would but it does illustrate parts of the things again with the border panel stuff. 
So I've put these same three elements, but I've put them over here on the right. And one of the things you note is that the right side expanded because the text field wants a lot of space by default. We could make it small, smaller. Uh, we could also tell the uh, button that we wanted it to take up more space by setting its preferred width. But this is you know, sufficient for what we're doing here. Like I said, I'm not trying to make a pretty GUI. I'm just trying to illustrate how things work. The last thing that I want to illustrate for this video is the uh, flow pane. So we're going to move flow pane, which will have the same things inside of it that our VBox does. <clears throat> and let's go look at how we create down here in layout at how we create a flow pane. There we go. We need to give it an orientation. Uh, if And then actually it doesn't have any constructions to take children, so I will have to change this. The orientation can either be orientation.vertical or orientation.horizontal. Uh, so I could make my flow pane go, go vertically, I'm going to make it go horizontally, and it turns out that that's what I would get if I, by default, use this version here. So that's the one I'm going to use. I'm just going to give it two numbers, and that is the gap that it should use both vertically and horizontally. Not necessarily in that order. Okay. Flow dot, and let's double check the API here. The field inside of the layouts for putting stuff in is the children. So I want to children, we'll see if we can do a plus equal, no wait, actually this will work nicely, equals list of those things. I expect that will be happy. Oop. And then before we run that, we should put the flow inside of here and it should go on the bottom. Okay, let's see what that looks like. It appears to be happy for running. Now, at this point, the flow looks exactly like a uh, an HBox. In order to this, I can make the GUI a little bit. Oh. <laughs> In this GUI, it's not <laughs> it's not doing it. Um, the flow will normally wrap things around. Let's actually, let's put the flow just for Let's try putting flow in the center just so that we can demonstrate that. I'm pretty sure in the center it will do what I want. I think the problem is that I have so few things in there yeah, there we go. Okay, so the H-Box, even if I move the H-Box into the middle here, it will lay the things out horizontally and they will always be horizontal. The flow layout, if there's not enough room to put them in one row, it will put them in two rows. Now, why didn't that happen when they were on the bottom? The reason for that is because in order to make that uh, change, I had to squish this down all the way. And so <clears throat> these... The, the fact that I had already squished down the center, it said, okay, we're just not going to try resizing. You've gone too small. We can't try to make things work here. Um, and you'll note that once I go smaller than that text field, it doesn't try ever try pushing that button down because basically it's like, okay, you don't have enough room to hold everything. So as soon as I go down into there, it kind of gives up on doing a lot of the resizing, which is probably a fairly smart thing to do. But once again, the difference between the HBox and the Flow, when I have the Flow set horizontal, is that the Flow will wrap around to a second row or a third row or a fourth row. If I had a whole bunch of elements here, it almost looks like works like words in a word processor. I could also take my Flow and orient it vertically, and then it would look a lot like the VBox, but it would start a second column 
if there wasn't enough space vertically for it to put things. So that's it for this video. We've seen two new layouts that we've used, the H-Box, the V-Box, and the Flow Pane, which are, are all fairly simple ones that uh, you can throw into GUIs.